Our brains are massive computational devices composed of over 100 billion neurons, each manipulating tiny pieces of information represented by electric charge, forming the complexity of our being. It's generally assumed that this flow of information is purely internal, relying on our senses and muscles to interact with the world around us. But could such a dense complex of constantly moving charge be affected by the electromagnetic radiation that surrounds us? Can we even influence these fields? and much like the technology we use daily, perhaps communicate through them. In 1979, Dr. Robert G. Yon, then the Dean of the School of Engineering and Applied Science at Princeton, established a controversial, almost heretical program, the Princeton Engineering Anomalies Research Lab, or PEER. Dr. Yan was an accomplished plasma physicist who had worked on advanced electric spacecraft propulsion systems in cooperation with NASA and the U.S. Air Force. He had also engaged in the study of psychokinesis for many years and had claimed success with an undergraduate project to study low-level psychokinetic effect on electronic random event generators. Over the years, Yan and his research partner, Brenda Dune, claimed to have created a wealth of small physical scale, statistically significant results that suggested direct causal relationships between a subject's intentions and otherwise random results, that our minds were capable of influencing random events. The core of Dr. Yan's research was centered on our thoughts manipulating the randomness of the electromagnetic field. The Peer Lab employed a device called the Electronic Random Event Generator to explore the ability of test subjects to use psychokinesis to influence the random output distribution of these devices. Electronic random event generators work by generating random numbers by physical process and not computation. In this case, the effect of electromagnetic quantum tunneling of an electron was the source of randomness. Quantum effect is unpredictable by nature and is considered the most random source available. This process produces random sequences of two possible outcomes through the electrons in the electrical flow within a diode. The probability that the electron will appear in the energetically forbidden region is determined statistically. We can think of these statistically determined streams as pulses of plus or minuses. The noise from the diode is then amplified in order to create an arrangement of random digital pulses that can be displayed in order to determine if those pulses conform to baseline randomness. This is similar to quantumly flipping a coin hundreds of times and determining if the odds have shifted from 50-50 for heads. During psychokinetic experiments, the random event generator would be activated for a specific period of time. The output sequence of numbers from the random event generator would then be averaged and compared against the baseline. Subjects would be asked to participate in one of three modes. In high intention mode, the subject would be asked to raise the average of the random sequence with their thoughts. Conversely, in low intention mode, the subject would be asked to lower the average. And in the final mode, no instructions to influence the random numbers were given to the subject. This was used to set the baseline of a mind with no intention. Throughout the first years of peer lab experimentation, results confirmed the capability of human consciousness to influence the physical world. Significant correlations were found between human intentionality and machine functioning. The high and low intention output distributions in these initial experiments, which included 33 individual subjects, were able to display significant difference from the baseline runs. After 12 years of collecting data, the peer lab found significant deviations for high intention runs, low intention runs, and high low separations. An independent analysis of the human machine data demonstrated that it is unlikely that these events occurred by chance and that the likelihood that these results are due to random noise or coincidence is 1 in 10 trillion. In an extension to the individual subject testing done at the peer lab, other forms of psychokinetic experiments with groups were done. In one variant, there were no stated intentions. The machine is just running. It was created in order to determine if groups of people can influence random event generator devices without directed conscious intention. The goal was to determine if the random event generator is responding to a possible existent consciousness field in which interacting participants produce. These group experiments produced some interesting results. In one experiment, the random event generator was left running while a group of people simultaneously watched a sunset. 
Deviations were found to have occurred in a correlating manner with the activity of the group of people watching a sunset. The group was best described as being in a trance. This is believed to be an example of telepathic group resonance or group cohesion. The idea is that there is some sort of telepathic emotional harmony in the group. Even more interesting was that emotionally inspiring venues have shown to have measurable effects. Sacred sites such as Crater Lake National Park and the ancient Egyptian sites all created these effects. Even several music and theater sites have also yielded positive effects, including the Beirut Opera and the New York City Opera. Group rituals that are based on the notion of unity have been found to show significant results as well. Furthermore, future independent analysis done in 1998 showed that the positive effect found for venues demonstrating emotional engagement and enthusiasm by participants was not likely to occur by chance. In addition to this observation, interestingly it was also discovered that a null effect occurred for venues where intellectual engagement was present. This suggests that rational thinking might interfere with anomalous effects on the random number of event generators. The psychokinetic effect appears to be heavily coupled to emotions, and aspects of consciousness appear to be highly related to group emotional harmony, its resonance. Even when the group is unaware of the random event generator or the experiment, positive results were observed. From the collective research, it has been proposed that subjective aspects of consciousness are highly related to group resonance. Dr. Jan described resonance as a surrendering sense of identity that merges with the machine into a unified system of exchanging roles with the machine, of falling in love with it or having fun with it. Strong emotion is correlated with resonance and also with the difference between high and low intention runs. The strong emotion may assist the process of information transfer between one's consciousness and the random event generator. The next evolution of psychokinesis research would come in 1997 with the Global Consciousness Project. Directed by cognitive psychologist Roger D. Nelson, this was an international, multi-laboratory collaboration which aimed to study collective consciousness. Building on years of laboratory experiments conducted at the Paralab, a globally based experiment was set up in which 12 independent random event generators called field regs were installed throughout the US and Europe. The recorded data was used as an instrument to study the effects of a global consciousness after highly focused or coherent large reaching group events such as a web promoted Gaia mind meditation in January 1997 and the death of Princess Diana later that year. Supporters and skeptics have referred to the aim of the Global Consciousness Project as being similar to detecting a great disturbance in the force. The project had claimed successes in detecting significant spikes and fluctuations during world resonating events. One of the more exceptional examples of these detections being a change in the level of randomness during the September 11, 2001 attacks at the same time of the plane impacts and the building collapses and over the two days following the attacks. However, it should be noted that the project had come under criticism for its data analysis techniques, citing statistical flaws in the presented conclusions. Even the New York Times weighed in on the subject with a 2003 article concluding, All things considered at this point, the stock market seems a more reliable gauge of the national, if not the global, emotional resonance. Despite the face criticism, empirical evidence has shown that psychokinesis and a linked global consciousness is worth conducting further research into. While the search will continually battle skepticism, outcomes with the Paralab and field regs have demonstrated a possible breakthrough in technology in its ability to detect collective harmonies. The random event generators may even be used to detect the presence of interpersonal harmony and feelings of love. The scientific pursuit to quantify and study psychokinetic characteristics should continue to be explored in order to further the study of consciousness and learn about the true extent of our human capabilities.